Hey everybody and welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. This is Katie Weaver and I'm here with my co-host and partner in crime, Christy Brower. Hello. Hello. Great to be here. Yeah. It's been a it's been quite the week, hasn't it? Oh my goodness. I can't believe it's two days after Christmas already. It's just all <laughs> flying by. I know for sure. Yeah. And we had a very nice Christmas. We had Christmas Eve at Christy's house and just had a lot of fun. Laughed so hard that uh, honestly, I just, uh, well, you know, peed my pants. I'll be honest. <laughs> I did. <laughs> We're of the age and have the genetics. That is mm. just what happens now. Mm -hmm. Oh, our grandma was a piss pants from a way oh, on back. Yeah. So bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, yeah. actually, both our grandmas were. <laughs> they were. Yeah. And our mom. Yeah. So a lot of laughing. That'll do it. But who cares? I mean, you know what? It's worth it. It, it totally is, yeah. I can live with that. So, yep, had so much fun. And then did Christmas Day at our sister Kara's house and had a wonderful day. It was a lot of fun. Everybody just, uh, oh, yeah. I don't, it was just fun. Like a lot of the kids are now adults. And it was kind of fun to see them like show up with their own gifts to give people. And yeah, it, it was very sweet. You know, it was just, it was fun to see these kids stepping into their own shoes. And yeah. It, it really is. Yeah, that 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 part was really cool. And just seeing so many of them with their own apartments now and their own houses yeah. and stuff. And so thinking about them on a completely different level when it comes to mm -hmm. gifting, you know. Right. Like my 20 year old son, the, his main gift, what he really wanted was a ninja foodie, which is, the yeah. big, you know, the ninja instant pot and air fryer, which I know you have. Mm -hmm. um, he wanted that so bad. He's so excited. He's had it out of the box. He's read all of the recipes. We're making a plan to practice with it together so that he knows how to use it before he goes home. He wanted that and a cast iron frying pan, the very most. <laughs> <laughs> and he got them both. <laughs> so funny how quickly that can change, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he told me, he goes, I feel like I should be asking for an Xbox or something, but all I really want is more cooking stuff. I get it. <laughs> I do get it. <laughs> this, this is what it means to be an adult. This is what it means to be thrilled when you get um, a new set of springform pants from your wife for Christmas, which is what I got. You know, like, oh, I need these so bad. I'm, you know, yeah. Yeah. Nope. I hear you. Totally. Uh, I got a singing bowl that I've been really wanting. Yes, you did. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I can't wait to be able to use it. I'm sure we'll use it in spirit school and I'll definitely yeah. use it. Uh, on some of our Thursday night shows as well. But my singing bowl, my heart chakra singing bowl was just a little Tibetan bowl that was like maybe a five inch, really small, just yeah. a little chimer. And so I, <laughs> I took Scott by surprise because I was on a series of holiday radio shows two Fridays ago. And one of the other hosts asked me, what do you really want for Christmas? And I went, hmm. What I really want is a new set of a new singing bowl, a heart chakra bowl. And poor Scott, who was the producer, my husband was the producer <laughs> of that show. And apparently he was in the other room, like, oh my God, well, I didn't know that. So he was scrambling. It actually got right online and ordered it. <laughs> it showed up on Christmas Eve about two o'clock. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Yeah, and it is so it's beautiful. It sings like it's just it's, it's a white, you know, a crystal bowl, and it mm -hmm. is. It sings beautifully. So I'm so excited. Yeah. I can't wait to share it with you guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. That'll be really fun in spirit school and on Thursday nights. That's mm -hmm. that's so cool. Well, and it's the perfect size. I had a set of bowls that were enormous, like 13, 14 inch bowls, and I couldn't hold them up. No, my oh, man, little arthritic so hands and wrists, I just can't do it. And so no. I sold them a couple of years ago, intending to replace them, but bought my daughter a new bat instead because, you know, I'm a softball mom and that's what we do. <laughs> and, uh, every spare amount of money you get goes to a new freaking bat. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I'm very, very excited. It's going to be a lot of fun to use. Yeah. Yes, it is. That's really cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Good. Well, we hope you guys had a good holiday, however you celebrated. And now, of course, we are uh, ramming up to the New Year celebration. Somebody Our sent me a meme today that said that it's in, I think, an Irish uh, tradition to open the door at new the uh, you know the twelve o'clock hour to mm -hmm. usher out the old year and usher in the new one, and she and I agreed that this year let's open 
doors, windows, car doors, dresser drawers, under the cabinet, anything you can open. I got anything you can. I love that. I saw shorts, another meme. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I saw another meme that said uh on New Year's on New Year's Day we will uh hindsight will actually be 2020. Yes. Which I think is really funny also mm -hmm. and true. And the Let's leave it all in the past, man. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah, I think a lot of people will look on 2020 with a fair amount of uh, you know, <sighs> anger in their heart. <laughs> yeah. Just looking at it like, I'm just glad it's over. Let's just move on. Me too. I'm glad it's done. There have been some gifts this year, for sure. Oh, they I had, definitely have. I had a badly needed surgery. Most of you don't know that. Yes. <laughs> that, um, that uh, uh, yeah, changed things for me a lot. And, you know, we've had some really good time at home that I actually haven't hated at all. You know, I mean, we certainly had some uh, downsides to this year, but there have been some blessings too, without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. Well, this case, uh, this was a bad, a bad situation that happened last week. And this is will be the first that we do on this case. There will be more coverage on this case. Uh, it was sent to us by someone who knows that uh, we did, you know, we've done extensive coverage on the Daybell case. And this is another case that is seems to be uh, at least in part, the case of some religious extremism. And mm -hmm. so we decided to pick it up. So we a lot of times don't take cases that are this uh, fresh. Yeah. Uh, also, active. you know, this this case is ultimately already solved, but it deserves the attention that uh, we're going to give it because I think, yeah. well, for a lot of reasons, I'll let you guys draw your own conclusions. But last week on the 20th, the police were called to the home of the mass uh, because there was a four-year-old that was unconscious. When they got there, what they found was up in her bedroom, a four-year-old child wrapped in a blanket. She was, her hair was wet. It appeared that perhaps she had been vomiting. She was dead. Mm -hmm. She was ice cold and she was absolutely covered in bruises. Head to toe head to toe and blisters on the backs of her, her bottom yeah. and her legs, uh, which we learned later were from being beat with a belt and a wooden spoon. Uh, they went from that room into another room and discovered a two-year-old in his crib, flat on his face, uh, alive, but also terribly beaten in the same kind of manners. Yeah. And then they found a woman, the mother of these children, in another room with a new baby, a uh, baby unharmed, at least as far as we uh, are aware, though I'm suspecting the baby was uh, abused just in different ways mm -hmm. more and, and along the lines of neglect and things. But uh, at any rate, uh, the mother was also beaten pretty good. The whole side of her face was black and blue. She had uh, belt marks on her back and down her legs. She also had been assaulted. The father in the home had also been abused. So dad's name is James Mast. Mom's name is Mary Mast. This is going to get confusing. So I'm going to try really hard to. Uh, there are a lot of masts. In there's this a lot game. of masts in the story. Yep. So James Mast tells the police that his neighbor and his, the neighbor's friend. Okay. We're going to try and keep up on this. His name is Ethan Mast. I think. Let's see. Hold on. I have multiple stories open to try and keep it all put together. They claim that the people across the street, their neighbors, had been coming over to discipline their children for the last while mm -hmm. and had accidentally killed Mary. Or, or not Mary, sorry had killed the younger one, Jessica, the four-year-old. Yeah. So Mary's the mom. So essentially what this has come out to be is that James and Mary are former Mennonites. They were Mennonites until not too long ago. Mm -hmm. And at that, at some time in the last couple of years, they seem to have left the uh, Mennonite religion and as well as the people across the street who did, and they have all started 
attending some other very unnamed church at this time. Yeah, no, couldn't seem to find anything giving any specifics on that anywhere. Mm -hmm. We don't seem to really know. At this yes. point, all the churches are trying to distance themselves from these people. The Mennonites yeah. want distanced. Whatever this other church is, want distanced as well. Nobody wants, it, it reminds me very much of the De Bell Vallow situation. Like nobody yeah. wants to claim these people. Mm -hmm. This isn't really our church. You know, these right. aren't really our beliefs. Yeah. So if we back up for a minute, there is a woman named Courtney Allman. Courtney yeah. Allman was living with James and Mary for a little while. Mm -hmm. They had a falling out with her and she moved across the street and moved in with Ethan and Phyllis. Yes. Both of these couples' last name is Mast, M-A-S-T, though they are claiming that they actually aren't related. They just have the same last name. So do what you want with that. I don't understand. But anyway, uh, yeah. kind of Courtney's been way. living there for a while. And it's Courtney and Ethan who have been providing the discipline to James's family and the reason they've been providing this discipline to James's family is because apparently, according to them, Mary had a demon. Right. And if they did not discipline Mary and her children adequately, the kids would end up just like Mary. What yeah. we don't know yet is why they thought that Mary had a demon or if this was simply their way of pulling off a really heinous crime. Right, right. Yeah, there hasn't been anything that I could find that had anything to do with Mary's behavior or anything that maybe indicated yeah. that she had a problem. Nothing. I've read a bunch of articles. I've read through the comments of every article because we keep overturning more people that know them or knew them. I, I, I still can't come up with that, but we will. We will. Yeah. We'll continue to work on it. Definitely. But people that know Phyllis and Ethan say that it has become clear in the last few months that Ethan and Courtney were having an affair. Yes. Uh, Courtney is 20. Ethan is 35. 21. 21. And I, from reading comments, I found it very interesting that a lot of people who know Courtney are claiming that she has been a very troubled kid uh, yeah. all along. And that they all expressed some degree of fear of her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that she's been problematic all her life. Mm -hmm. And she's gotten some crazy weird thing going on with these people. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also some allegations that Courtney claims that she was sexually assaulted when she was at James and Mary Mass's house. No yeah. proof of that. There were no charges filed or anything like that. But then she ends up across the street and now pretty soon they're doing this. So for the last two weeks, they have been coming to the house twice a day and issuing brutal beatings on Mary and the four-year-old daughter and the two-year-old son. And apparently on the 20th, they came over and beat the kids, beat the mom, and then as a part of their punishment to Mary, they made her take the daughter out to the daughter Jessica, the four-year-old, to a pond and drown her, essentially. Hold her under the water for a certain amount of time, and then they left her on the bank to freeze. And, and apparently, point, mom complied. Yes, mom complied. They had, the dad says, James says that they told him that he would either comply with the, uh, the discipline that his family needed, or they would just come over and shoot all five of them because they had to get the demon out. Uh, James and Mary seem to have actually been absolutely, utterly terrified of these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they admitted to the police that uh, they also have been a part of the abuse of the children. They have sexually assaulted the two older children with various objects that the uh, that Courtney and Ethan had uh, ordered them to uh, penetrate the children with. They've done all kinds of terrible things in the last yeah. two weeks at the direction of Courtney and Ethan. So that's what the police got there too. 
is basically this scene. The dead child. Because dad finally called the police. Dad finally called the police. Yeah, because. Uh, uh, too little because, too late, clearly. Yeah, yeah. But because Jessica was dead, he finally called the police. So yeah. basically claiming to the police that, you know, he and Mary were terrified and they didn't know what to do. And they believed that Mary had a demon. So they were trying to do the things they were supposed to. And they had threatened to shoot them. And so they were just doing what they were, you know, telling them to do. That's the story. That's the yeah. story. Uh, so they take the baby and the two-year-old into custody, obviously, you know. Mm -hmm. And they take uh, Mary to the hospital because she's quite injured. Yeah. And shortly thereafter, they arrest Ethan and they arrest Courtney. This was on the 20th. The community was outraged that those two were arrested, but that the parents weren't. Yeah. Because they were a part of this abuse. Right. And clearly fact, complicit, allowing it, participating yeah, in, in fact, it. Mary's the one who drowned, uh, at least according to James, Mary's the one that drowned Jessica. Yeah. And so finally, on Christmas Eve, the night of Christmas Eve at 7 p.m., they finally do arrest james and mary and now they are in custody as well so all four of them are going to stand trial at this point the charges for ethan and courtney are second degree murder they have both pled not guilty and the charges for james and mary are more like conspiracy to commit or assist yeah and like child endangerment that. yeah it's not they're not neither of them are charged with murder no. Mary is charged with first degree endangering the welfare of a child resulting in death and first degree domestic assault. James faces one count each of endangering the welfare of a child in the first degree resulting in death and endangering the welfare of a child in the first degree resulting in furious, serious physical injury. So that is what, uh, that's what we know right now. So now there's, of course, a lot of questions about what the hell kind of group are these people in? Mm -hmm. Who else is in it? Mm -hmm. What other kids? There's been a lot of talk of cults. Is this some kind mm -hmm. of cult activity? Yeah. It all, it, it's it's so familiar to me mm -hmm. uh, with the Daybell Vallow case. It's There's a yeah. lot of similarities here. Mm -hmm, for sure. The, uh, the Mennonite community is, you know, trying to get some distance from it and saying, you know, they haven't even come to church or been a part of our us for a while. In fact, Ethan was like oustered, it sounds like, a few years ago. Yeah, it sounds like he, yeah, he was kicked out. Now, his wife, Phyllis, put out a statement. So Phyllis put out a statement, and I'm going to read it to you. She said, I want to ex express my shock and devastation at the recent circumstances involving our family and the James Mast family. My heart bleeds for all those who are hurt and devastated by this tragedy, as well as for myself and my children. I understand there are many questions from the public, including questions about my involvement. There are things that even I do not understand. At this time, I am not free to publicly discuss this situation due to legal constraints. I am cooperating in a transparent and forthcoming way with law enforcement investigators and those who are helping me walk through this. I respect the upcoming judicial process and desire that justice be done. Thank you for your prayers. Please continue praying for everyone, including the extended families of everyone involved. And I did read that Phyllis and the kids are still going to a Mennonite church. Right. It's just Ethan that was, uh, he was shunned for some reason a few years ago. Yeah. And I couldn't find why. Did you find yeah. why? No, but I think there's more coming out. I was amazed. I studied this case yesterday when it was first presented to us, and I was amazed when I went back to it today how much more information had come out. Yeah, there really is lots of stuff still being released. Mm -hmm. James was also had been beaten with a wooden spoon because he showed empathy at some point for his wife and kids. And yeah. apparently showing empathy was against the rules and if you showed empathy for them, uh, Satan would come into the house, is what he was told. Mm. Lots of questions I have. First of all, what so kind of many. IQ do James and Mary have? Are these yes. low-functioning adults? 
uh, obviously, you know, they've got some really serious and weird religious shit going on, you know, that is a part of this. Because they truly seem to have been absolutely believing this stuff and were scared right. to death of Ethan and Courtney. And they were allowing this for two weeks. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could have stopped it at any moment. They could have called the police. They could have packed yeah. up their kids and left. I mean, they had yeah. a lot of options that they did not have. Oh, they could have locked the front door. I mean, they could have done a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. They, they they could have uh, and, and didn't. And that's where I have serious questions. And I agree with you about their, their functioning. Mm-hmm. And, you know, also, where are these beliefs coming from? Although yeah. the idea that you have to beat a demon out of someone is not a new concept at all. No. That's been around a long time. It's ridiculous. And please mm -hmm. don't ever do it because it does not work. And it, that's no. not what's going on in the first place. No, but this feels a whole lot like zombies. You know, this feels like the Daybell zombie a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Like someone's determined. And how do you determine that someone has a demon Mm -hmm. And 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 if someone has a demon, why does that mean their children will? I mean, there's I have tons of questions because I'm mm -hmm. I've done and I you have too lots of work in dark entity attachment clearing and stuff yeah. like that. And that's not what any of this is. No. Also, is this actually just Courtney? I, I really wonder if Courtney is not the ringleader of this. Oh, I and feel is like it's yeah. not, yeah, just Courtney getting revenge on. James and Mary because she had a falling out with them and they kicked her out. Mm -hmm. Is that what the crux of this really is? Right. Oh, if I feel like she definitely is the real leader. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that entirely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the case so far as we know it. Uh, it's very, very sad. An obituary was published today for Jessica. Okay. Uh, that looks very standard, you know, includes her parents, her siblings, like a happy little family kind of obituary. Oh, yeah, to read it, you wouldn't have no idea what's going on. Yeah, people are pretty outraged about that, too. There is a candlelight vigil that is happening in their town for her. This is the city of Lincoln in Missouri. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or Coal Camp. Coal Camp. Mm. Anyhow, uh, Coal Camp, City of Lincoln, apparently. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and there, yeah, there is a candlelight vigil. The community, of course, is really rocked and upset and, you know, trying to make sense of what has happened here. I have serious questions about what other victims are in this case. Right. What other children have been beaten to a pulp over some other, you know, these beliefs? Who else is actually truly involved? I really suspect that it goes a whole lot deeper than we know yet. Yes, I think so too. This is coming from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Where is this coming from? Mm -hmm. Where's the yeah. root of this? Yeah. I, I have real questions about what church they've been going to since leaving the Mennonites. Mm -hmm. And what, yeah, I, I feel like this is going to become bigger than it is now. And it is pretty big. Agreed. I, my focus this week will be to try to chase down what is the church or the gathering? I'm guessing it's a small group of people. Mennonites uh, often do gather in homes for right. church. And even though this is not, this was not a Mennonite uh, church thing. I, we want to be really clear about this. You know, Mennonites yeah. don't beat their children to a pulp and drown them in ponds to get demons out any more than Mormons, you know, cut up their kids and burn them in the backyard. You know, this is not right that church this is people in it and or you know formerly in it who have you know created this uh whatever weird spin-off thing mm -hmm. that's going on here so that's what i'm going to try and chase down this week is what is the group what's the right group? well yeah we need to know that to understand this yeah because i really feel like there's a whole lot more in the group than just james mary ethan and courtney I feel like there's got to be more people in the community there, you know. Right. And then not you know necessarily involved in killing these children or this child, but but in this group. So what else is happening? Right. Right. Yeah. And there, you know, the definitely the law enforcement in the community is saying this is not a cult, you know, this is just an isolated incident. And I understand mm -hmm. what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But 
this does seem like there's more going on that we're going to learn more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It really is. Uh, it is pretty horrifying. But it's unbelievable. This, yeah. I am glad to see that the parents finally were arrested and charged. I can't imagine uh, yeah. why they wouldn't be charged, you know? And so, you know, obviously they, they had to be charged. I mean, come on. They were witnesses to this. They were there. Right. Right. They were there. They, they gave access to the kids. I mean, then they also did some of the abuse and admitted to it. I mean, I don't care how scared you are. Right. You are the people on the planet that are charged with keeping these children safe. I just, there's just no excuse for me, especially because it wasn't an isolated incident. Right, right. It went I mean, on for two straight weeks and there were at least two beatings a day for two weeks. Right. I mean, they had so many opportunities to stop this, mm -hmm. to protect their children. I was just doing a little searching because I was curious about what Mennonites believe about evil spirits and that kind of thing. Oh, and definitely. apparently um, there are ceremonies. Mennonites do have ceremonies to cast out evil spirits. Mm -hmm. And so that is something, you know, the, the, the thing always in these extreme situations is there's always a basis in their original belief system that then has yeah. gone way out there. Yeah. And so I wanted to see, you know, do Mennonites actually practice some kind of exorcism? They do. Yeah. Uh, it is not beating children to death. No, I want to be very clear about that. But, yeah. the, but there are Mennonites who do believe in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, doing rituals to cast out evil spirits. Mm -hmm. And so there is some still some yeah. belief in that within that belief system. So that's mm -hmm. one place for us to just start. Mm -hmm. And we're going to, you know, we'll continue right. to. Um, yeah. So the two questions we really want to answer here in the next week so that we can come back with a better report or, or you know, a, a, an additional report. Um, well, three things, actually. I really want to learn more about Courtney. Yes. I want to learn more about uh, wh who decided that Mary had a demon and why. Yeah. Like, what, where did what, this originate? Yeah. Yes. And then, of course, uh, what is who is this group that they're meeting with? So those are the yeah. things we'll try to ferret out next. Uh, but, of course, if you guys have any information you want to share with us or if you have more questions that you'd like us to d dive deep into, uh, please let us know. And we'll do the, our best to do so. We're going to just keep uh, researching, yeah, digging, asking questions. Yeah, definitely. You can go to our website, uh, True Crime Paranormal Podcast. Mm -hmm. And down at the bottom where it says case su suggestion, just send in a case suggestion on this case and give us a question or give us information if you know something. Yeah. Um, feel free to, um, you know, because we, we definitely want to get to the bottom of understanding what's happened here. Yeah. And, and hopefully, you know, shed, shed some light on yeah. it. It's a pretty yeah. dark situation. I don't know how much light we can shed. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think cases like this, it's really important to dig through and break up the, the belief, you know, mm -hmm. hash it out, understand it so that we can prevent things like this from happening in the future. Absolutely. I, mean, I think knowledge that is power and it know. is well, and I, I feel like talking about exorcisms and and ceremonies to cast out demons and things like that they mm -hmm. go very unspoken and i feel yeah. like you and i have already done a lot of work in this area as far as mm -hmm. energy work is concerned and understanding this but i feel like people have to be willing to stand up and talk about it mm -hmm. in order to prevent horrible events like this happening mm -hmm. absolutely without a doubt yep yeah so that is our report for today. And again, we will come to you with more information as soon as we have it, yeah. We're, you know, building our list of curiosities here so that we can start fulfilling those and bringing sure. more info to you. So this is our first case this week. There'll be another one coming out on Tuesday and again on Wednesday, uh, different cases, not the same one. We'll mm -hmm. probably revisit this in the following week, unless something yeah. big happens, we'll let you know. But uh, other than that, of course, that's what we'll have. And then Wednesday night, we will have our case update live stream at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, and then we won't have psychic uh, the Psychic Hour this week, of course, because it will be New Year's Eve. And, you know, I won't be that sober. <laughs> yeah, great but if you are uh, attending Spirit School or if you want to get started with Spirit School, which is our 
membership here on YouTube. We do have a spirit school class on Tuesday night, so the 29th at 8 p.m. Mountain, and that will be introduction to attachments. And yeah. so definitely join us for that. If you haven't joined yeah. spirit school yet, you certainly can. And spirit school is super easy because it's just live streams right here on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So we post reminders, then all you have to do is just come to our YouTube channel and participate in a live stream. Or if you can't participate in the live stream, you can watch the video after the fact. Mm -hmm. So, and super if easy. you have signed up for the spirit school membership, you will see those videos show up. If you haven't, you won't. I mean, it's, it's that yeah. easy. There's yeah, nothing it special is. you have to do. Yeah. They're on our home screen. If you don't see them, it's because you haven't signed up. If you do see them, it's because you have. So yep. it's that simple. We've had a little confusion about how do I find it? Well, it, you don't have to find it. You just come straight to our homepage. That's it's yep, right, just come right to YouTube and it'll be right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. All righty. Well, that is what we've got for tonight. So you guys, thanks so much for being here. You have been listening to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. Take care. Bye, guys.